payments process, how can we go from bottleneck to catalyst? And it is sponsored by Aurum Solutions. Thanks to everyone here with us in Barcelona and obviously everyone watching on the SBC Digital Events platform. Uh, I will now introduce and hand over to our moderator for this session, Ilya Macharayani, Senior Partner and CEO at 4H Agency. Over to you, Ilya. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for, for this kind introduction. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, I will also introduce my fellow panelists to all attendees who came to this panel today. <laughs> uh, I have with me uh, Miguel Coca, who is a group financial controller at Carousel Group, and Tiago Vega, who is heading business development department at Aurum Solutions, which is also a sponsor of today's panel. And uh, as, as already mentioned, we are going to discuss uh, the payments process and bottleneck and possible catalysts of payments, uh, but I think that we will be more focused on bottlenecks today. And the first thing that I would like to start today is discussing how operators could tackle the fact that you need a lot of different payment providers in different countries, because this obviously entails uh, well, complex consequences, uh, including possible issues with integration, with multiple integrations around the country, uh, well, generally different regulations and different compliance in particular jurisdictions and all that. So, guys, over to you, who would like to start? Yeah. Thank you, Ilya. Okay, Miguel, please. Yeah, so, it's, it's, it's a hard world, I would say. Uh, there is a lot of different providers out there. Uh, some, of, some of them are very big, some of them are very small, but the thing is that it's very hard to integrate them all into this one system, you know? Uh, our personal, uh, our, our, our experience is that you have to try to pro pro propose to, the, to your client the best PSP or the optimum PSP that he can get, you know? And we have faced problems when it comes with territories. We have PSPs that are based on just one territory, very well known, but it's not known in the rest of the world. So having said that, that PSPs focus on that clientele that they have. And when it comes to integrate that to our, to our uh, cashier, it's becoming a problem because we have others that needs to be all in the same funnel of information, you know? Uh, our, our IT teams always struggle, you know, to integrate them all into just one place. So at the end, you have a bunch of suppliers, some integrated, some are like free spirits over there. And uh, our finance, in my, my case, becomes a very challenging situation when it comes to do the revenue recognition, for instance to know how many money do we have in our cash, to, to go through an audit and, and present to them, okay, this is what we have, but you need to do like a leap of faith, I would say, sometimes, because of the, as I said, the large amount of, of PSPs, different PSPs that we have. Yeah, I see, I see. Before we get to Tiago and what he thinks about that, quick question for you, Miguel. Uh, what would you choose uh, and what would you recommend to choose for, well, anyone looking for a payments provider, uh, a regional and small payments provider which cover only, well, one market, for instance, or a big giant covering a lot of markets around the world? Well, <laughs> to be honest, uh, you go for the one that, that allows you to get in, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is what it is. Uh, at the end, at the end you, you, you knock on all of the doors, you know? The, the small ones are the, the, the ones that are more willing to have business with you. The big ones, well, they have business there, you know? Also, our industry is what it is. So you need to cope up with it, you know? They have a lot of compliance issues, a lot of risk issues that we need to cope up with. So at the end, you start knocking on all of the doors, but some of them open to you, some others are just closed and they are not even answered to you. So, so once you get that thing, you need to see also if my player or my client is going to use that, because maybe he's not accustomed to use that kind of PSPs, and this is a fact, you know? Because at the end, 
when you, when you register on a, on a platform, you do that registration, but also you need to register on the PSP because then you need to do two registering. And this is also a, a, a kind of problem at the end because uh, the time to get a client is bigger than for other entities. I think that this is the, one of the most sensible approaches that I've heard for in a long time. So, Tiago, surprise me. <laughs> I just want to say that uh, regarding this fact, you know, he's the one in the cold face. He's the one that has to fight all the problems. We, as a company, Orum, we work with many other industries. And in fact, uh, in the beginning of the week, I was talking to a, a finance controller as well who, who moved from gaming to aviation industry. Well, not a very good time to move to aviation. But uh, he was saying Very that uh, yeah, he, he was saying that uh, airlines, and he, he was saying uh, when I moved to the industry, I was like, uh, oh my God, we are in so many countries, and we don't have that many local payment providers. We need to add so so much more. And then uh, the guys were saying, calm down, you know, because in gambling, the experience needs to be absolutely seamless, right? You know, you need, to, like Miguel was saying, you know. If a client has to do two registrations, you lost the player. He's going to go somewhere else, right? I mean, it's just a fact. Uh, in aviation, he already has to get up to pick up his passport. So what's the point? He'll pick up the credit card as well, you know? And, uh, and he decided not to. I mean, uh, for, for this, this is a silly story, but it's, it's a fact of life. And um, I think this is the particular reason why in gambling, in the gaming industry, is so important to allow uh, so many different payment options, which then creates so many problems for the people in finance who, who have to handle it. It's not, I mean, we always say that it's a very, very different job to be the head of payments. You know, we focus on getting more payment methods and, you know, making sure that you have the best combo possible. But then it's these guys here in finance that really need to pick up the pieces and, and, and join them all and try to make a story out of it. Uh, and when auditors knock on the door and say, what's your true cash position at this stage? And, uh, you know, um, uh, it then becomes a real problem. And I think that's, uh, that's what we have to add here. Yeah, I see, I see. And I, I fully agree with what we just uh, mentioned because, wow, essentially, uh, I, I would say that definitely gambling is well, quite different when it comes to payments. And uh, it's different payments than in, in other industries, in my view. And since we're talking about different, uh, let's also try and tackle on the issue of different regulations around different jurisdictions because I think that as a lawyer by trade, essentially I know that uh, this cur underwater current that is usually changing the landscape in a couple of years in the forward is usually the regulations changing that which are not, uh, not anyone are aware about that. So how do you tackle these guys? What do you think about that, Miguel? Well, this is a good one. Uh, <laughs> our company, our, our entity is mainly uh, based in, in the United States. Uh, so, United States is a country formed by 50 different small countries. And each one of them has its own regulation. So, this is very complex when it comes in terms of uh, establish uh, your uh, operation in a state which it will be completely different if you go to another state. I'll give you an example. We are, our operation that we have right now in the United States is based in Colorado. Colorado uh, led us to have a bank wherever in the United States, but it needs to be there in the United States, okay. wherever. So we have a bank in West Virginia. That is something that we will comment later on. How is the approach to the banking uh, <laughs> op uh, options? We are, we are going to go uh, in the near future to New Jersey, okay? So, as I said, Colorado, one bank, United States, nothing else. Everything is managed here in Spain. And some in the United States that we have there. Okay, so we're going to go to, the, to New Jersey in the near future. So, in order to start operating in New Jersey, in terms of banking, we need to have a bank, a branch, there physically located in the, in the state of New Jersey. We need to have also a physical office in the state of New Jersey. We need to hire a CPA to manage all the accounting of that state in New Jersey. Oh God. And this is on top of my head. For <laughs> sure, there are 10 more things that I need to cope up with. But yeah, if we talk about regulations, uh, this is when you know the, the problem with the PSPs is multiplied by whatever you figure you want to put on there. Because each country territory, it will have their own. 
So maybe they allow you to work with that bank, but not with that other, or that VSP need to have some compliance issues that this doesn't have in whatsoever. So yeah, uh, regulation, I know it's very complex, and everyone is doing their own regulations. Even here in Europe, we have different, even though we have licenses, for instance, we have a license uh, from Malta, the MGA license, but we can't operate in the whole EU. We, we are not allowed to operate, even though it's a license in an Euro, EU country. So this is, a, this is a thing, yeah, to, that in our country, it's a very time-consuming thing, for sure. You need to have a very strong compliance team in order to understand everything that is in the regulation. And then from a finance and payment point of view, it makes you to deal with a lot of different options. And you can just rely on one. You need to look for different options and different payment methods in order to cope up with different regulations. Okay, okay. Thank, thanks a lot, Miguel. And quick question from myself again. Uh, more about how you approach these regulation changes in general. Because, for instance, this New Jersey story that you told, at what moment you realize that you need to have a local presence in New Jersey before or after you started to try and operate there? No, luckily, we haven't started yet. So we, we realized that we have this issue before because you have the full set of, of rules. Actually, New Jersey, being one of the states that has been with the gambling for so long is the one that has more developed the, the regulations, so they are asking for more things. The rest, I don't know if you're aware of, but half of the United States is not yet with online gaming, which, which, which yeah. We, are, yeah. we are on. Um, the rest is like followers. So they take the, the big states like Nevada or New Jersey, and they not, I would say, copy and paste, but they try to get the best or not the worst, I would say, and to, to to uh, how do I say to to make things easier for the for the operators, I such see. as Colorado or Iowa, they're going to enter in the in just maybe one month. So they 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 would like to have operators rather than to have so much control upon them. I would say. I see. I see. Understood. Thanks, Miguel. Now, Tiago, how do you tackle the different different regulations and different compliance requirements in different jurisdictions for yourself? What is it for you? For us, you know, we, being a software provider, uh, we're very lucky we don't have to face any of that. <laughs> uh, one thing we have to do is we, we have to help uh, more than 30 different operators, some very, very big worldwide, uh, and some significantly small uh, uh, as well. And um, well, what, what we try to do is uh, consolidation of information, particularly uh, from a compliance point of view and from a finance point of view. Uh, we try to have everything consolidated so um, and, and that will help because like we were discussing before and going back to the same topic over and over again <laughs> you know the payment ecosystem is becoming more and more complex if you don't have the tool to allow you to consolidate and, and, and to create uh, unified reports uh, then, then it creates a big problem you know regulation as you said very well in the beginning it's a rising tide it's never going to stop <laughs> and sometimes you only discover uh, after uh, and then you're no longer compliant and then you have a massive bill to pay and we see that on SBC News every week. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, so we try to help our clients the best we can on that sense and keep our consultants top notch. I'm sure you do the same. <laughs> yes, I know a thing or two about consulting, I think. Uh, and when you're talking about your clients, I assume that you are taking proactive position when it comes to supporting your clients as well from your side where you can support them. And uh, essentially, uh, you're trying to find a suitable, well, you're obviously uh, eager to reply to any request that you would receive from your client with regard to particular regulation changes or something like that. Absolutely. It's even sometimes it's even the other way around, you know. We notice something changing <laughs> there and we're already saying, well, that will happen sooner rather than later. It will, will happen there, you know, as well, you know, and, and, that's, and that's what we try to do, you know. We try to help the problem before the problem starts, you know, it's uh, alerting. And sometimes clients listen, sometimes they don't. <laughs> well, as you see, our room solutions can not only help by sponsoring this panel, by helping their clients as well. <laughs> 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 so, right, uh, another interesting point, and I think that we can touch this upon from, from the standpoint of finance, is the fees side and the fixed side. And I see that Miguel definitely has something to say on that, so, judging from his face, basically. 
Well, to me, every time that I see a contract from a PSP, it's like, uh, you know, like trying to understand a very word mathematical operations in order to calculate the fees that are going to be there. Uh, it's, and, and from finance point of view, when you need to uh, budget those uh, costs, it's, it's purely impossible. I mean, if you have a very good database of historical uh, information that, that you can rely on, it's just purely, uh, as I said before, a leap of faith. You can put whatever is going to come. Yeah, fees is, is one, one thing that always when I, when I, when I do my, my review in the bank accounts in our PSPs and I see the fees, I need to trust. I need to trust that is well calculated uh, and, and, and that's it. I mean, there is also a problem that we are having, not a problem I would say, but, but something that, that you know in this, in this world that everything is connected, we have the issue with the mutual currency. You know, and you can with the consolidation. Fortunately, when you are in the United States, operating in the United States, you can only operate within the state borders, so that eases you the problem because you can only operate in USD. But when you are talking about MGA, that is a worldwide uh, license, you are talking about whatever currency in the world that you are able to operate. And for instance, in our case, we have Canadian dollars, we have New Zealand dollars, we can we could have rupees. So that, that comes a, a big issue, you know, in terms of FX fees that you're having that is killing your, your GGR at the end, plus the process of fees. Another killer of GGR. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the end are killers that you put on there, you know, that FX fees, processor fees. But then it comes the terms in the consolidation, because at the end you need to report to someone because our, our, our business, and I have to that be very clear on that, is well regulated and you need to report every single cent that you do out there. Because behind of that, there is a tax. So that is why you are going to report every single cent. And you're going to have an audit that is going to confirm that whatever you're reporting is correct. No matter if you're reporting in euros, US dollar, or whatever other currency. That's why solutions like <laughs> Fortunately, we're going to have <laughs> with, with this guy. He's going to help us in the process. But yeah, I mean, having all of those PSPs working with different currencies, trying to consolidate them all into a, into a safe chart, into a, into a cashier, and then have a report that provides you the information, the currency that you, your uh, gaming authority would like to see, it's really, really as from my point of view, a very tough situation, a very tough uh, thing that we have nowadays. Okay, okay, I see. Now, on, 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 back on the fees point, Thiago. <laughs> Please provide us with your insight on how to, how do you see this and how do you see well essentially this issue of high complex payment fees and effects and all that? I think uh, one thing I want to highlight is the amount of times that Miguel had to say the word consolidation. Uh, <laughs> and I, I've said that as well. You know, um, again, Payments and finance uh, are very, very different areas within a gambling operator. And uh, what is the solution for the payment side will eventually create a problem on the finance side. And uh, what they need is very, very clear uh, consolidated accounts so they can report. And you saw what Miguel said, you know, if there is an audit auditor in the firm, they need to be able to say, these fees belong to this operator in this market, in this currency, and those fees belong to that. And, and in the end of the day, from an accounting point of view, and again, I might be teaching granny how to suck eggs, you know, but the thing is, uh, it will be uh, a, ba a massive number of journal files that will eventually go to your finance system. And, uh, you know, this might be boring conversation, uh, hopefully not, and this time uh, 5.30. Uh, but uh, that needs to be done every day. Um, and it's not easy. It's not easy because the information most of the times is not there. Yeah. And, and when it is there, it's like you said, it's a big leap of faith. And that's something that in the industry we need to work and we need to improve, uh, yeah. despite being hard, I think. As, as you said, I mean, we work together. Payment, finance, we are within the same team. So at the end, the, the information should flow on that way. You know, it comes from payment and it goes to finance. Because eventually, whatever it's, it's payment producing will be a hidden in my account or in my bank. 
I don't mind. So, so that flow needs to be very smooth, you know? We don't need to have uh, interference in the process. And as Tiago said, we are, co we are moving a massive amount of movements, massive. When I say, uh, you can't process that manually, never. I mean, in the beginning you could, but it will be a point that will be completely impossible. So you need to rely first on the information from your PSPs, second, on IT solution that will manage that information to be readable by the financial systems. All right. Uh, well, since we have only five minutes left, I think I will ask both of you uh, to provide a piece of advice, each of you, uh, with regard to one simple question which you already touched upon, uh, on how to combine finance on one hand and payments on the other, because uh, both, 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 both departments within, well, big operators, within big companies, they are trying to push the wagon into different directions sometimes. And I think that you guys, with your experience, you're able to provide with available insight on how would you do this or how are you doing that already uh, and how you're combining them. And Tiago, please, any advice? <laughs> I decided to switch, switch you, Miguel and Tiago, yeah. Well, I mean, for me, um it's, it's really important that uh, we try to get uh, CFOs and group finance controllers more involved within the process. That could be a big change in all operators. Uh, looking at the audience, you know, there are uh, good training companies out here who also help, help, help with that in that area. And they, they, Because in the end of the day, um, it needs to be seen as an holistic vision. You know, there is no other way to look at finance because in the end of the day it's all about the GGR, you know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> if, uh, so um, get finance people more involved, get the CFOs more involved, get the group finance controllers more involved with payments. Don't tell them this is it, take it or leave it. No, <laughs> so, like, get everybody involved, get people speaking and, uh, and that, that will make a massive difference in the end in the bottom line. No, absolutely no question about that. So essentially, if we look at, at your point from other direction, uh, your, 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 your idea is that uh, for now, usually there is little or no connection between finance and payments. And uh, usually this connection and this communication between these two departments goes through the top management, I guess, and only that. But there is no direct, di direct link between them. Am I right in this? I think there, there, there's little of that. And then you would be surprised, you know, honestly. I mean, you won't be surprised because you work in consulting, <laughs> but some people would be surprised in, 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 in what you see. In, even in very, very big operators. I mean, I think the easiest answer for me to your question will be, yeah, buy my software, obviously. <laughs> but that's, that's not why I'm here, right? Uh, I think... This is also an answer. <laughs> yeah, okay, Miguel, what's your advice? Uh, the thing that Tiago commented is, is, is clear. It's not that we are uh, trying to fight each other, you know? It's, it's just a matter of who's your daddy. So who is my daddy? My daddy is finance, he's a CFO. Who is the daddy of payment? It's operations. So you always have this eternal fight between operation, finance, commercial, marketing. I mean, it's, it's always there, you know, even though we are within the same company. How can you uh, facilitate the communication between departments? Well, in my case, I have it very clear. And that's what I'm going to do in the near future, is put controllers from my department to control, not, not the operation, the reporting side. So when I got that people there, I have more knowledge about what they are doing, and I am also uh, confident of why I'm reporting to my external uh, uh, institution, gaming authorities, whatever, uh, banks, auditors, etc. So this is what I'm tackling. I'm putting controllers upon the uh, payment. As I said, not to control what they are doing. I don't care what they, what yeah, they of do. Of course, of course. Don't care. It's hard to say that. But in order to put some financial thoughtful behind what they are doing. That's solid advice, really solid advice. And I think that uh, in the end of the day, uh, it's all about exchange of the information, right, between two departments and having uh, this benefit of understanding what is going on under your, well, near your neighbor's desk and understanding what, what, what our payments guys doing and what, what is finance team doing right now. So I think that this is very important and I'm really glad that you both uh, essentially talked about the same point, the same idea about lack of connection between two departments. I think this is very important. Uh, essentially, we are 
almost closed and I think that we, uh, we, we run out of time. Thanks a lot, guys, for valuable discussion and valuable insights. It was a huge pleasure to moderate you both. Uh, and thanks a lot to our audience. Thanks, guys. Uh, well, this is it, I guess, for today. <laughs>